We can hear you fine, and I'm going to step away into the background now. Okay. Welcome, everyone, to the breakout session for the ESIP RDA Earth, Space um, and Environmental Sciences Interest Group. Now, can someone bring up the slides, please? Share screen and show slides. Here they come. Okay, so how do we... All right. So can you go to the first slide, please, Shelley? No, that's not the first. And the title we've chosen for this is Making Global Connections in Earth and Environmental Science, Data Infrastructures and also Repositories. The chairs of this group are Helen Glaves, who unfortunately could not be with us, Shelley, Danny Kincaid, myself, and our new chair, Pedro, who has joined us from Brazil. Next. The meeting objectives are we're going to continue mapping the landscape of earth space and environmental data infrastructures and vocabulary resources and going to ask for you to make more additions to our um, two catalogues that we've been running for quite a while. We want to actually try this time to seriously connect with research infrastructures in the global south and we hopefully have a speaker for Got our South American, American speaker. And, and as well, well from our last session, what we want to do is continue this workflow dialogue that we've been developing between the ESS, ESES researcher, domain repositories, publisher, and scholarly publications. Next. Now, um, so look, our agenda is I'm going to give you a bit of an introduction. I want to review the current status of our catalogues and invite new um, contributions. We'll then have our usual news break where we'll throw the audience, throw it open to the audience to tell us about any new ideas or new news or um, infrastructures they know of. And then we're going to have a presentation on Brazil and hopefully one on China. We're then proposing to go into two breakout sessions and um, the people who are running those breakouts will give a short five minute teaser of what we're going to talk about so you can choose which one to go to or not to go to. We'll have our breakouts, report back, and then we'll have our wrap up and next steps. Next slide. So the meeting notes are here. Maybe Danny or um, Shelley could put that in the chat box. And if you open up that document, we're asking you to put your name, affiliations, email, because we keep track of um, who's coming. And again, the other link is to our group page. And so if we do, if you're not already on that and you're interested in what we're doing, then please sign up and you can join our little community. Ah, um, just an aside, our Chinese speaker has now joined. I don't, so the technical people, I don't know whether he's going to need assistance when the time comes for him to make his presentation. Okay, let's get back to this. Next. So we started this group um, in P10 in Montreal in 2017, and I think we've been appearing at each um, activity ever since. And we run these two crowdsourced catalogues. Um, again, uh, we'll put the link in the chat, or oh, the, the links are in the notes that we've just put in the chat. So the first one, these are both crowdsourced documents, and we would really invite you to have a quick look at it because we've got a lot of new people here we know haven't been here before, and make sure if you're working on an infrastructure or a data project for Earth Sciences that you fill that in. Or on the next worksheet, you'll see there's another one where it's people who are working on cross-domain infrastructures that include earth, space, and environmental sciences. We also, about a year ago, started this semantic resources catalog where we're kind of 
keep track of um, people who are developing vocabularies or ontologies or even just lists and thesauri, just something that is uh, a, an available um, vocabulary on the um, internet that we can all use. So partly so that we can reuse them, but more to help you raise awareness of where these things are being developed. So you don't go and start a vocabulary knowing that someone else already has, not knowing that someone else has already done that. Okay, so again, um, these are crowdsourced, they're open. We don't care who makes a contribution. Anything and everything you can make is more than welcome. And so, as I said, we're bottom up. We want to leverage activities and stop reinventing the wheel. However, as I said, we've been going since 2017, but um, I think it was about two years ago, we realized that we had a problem. So the one, the groups that first met in Montreal were Oscope from Australia, EarthCube from the US, and I think it was um, EPOS and Envy from Europe. And after about two or three years, we realized we had not moved out of that frame of Australia, um, North America and Europe. And yet we knew from contact with a lot of people that there's some really um, good stuff going on in Asia, South America and Africa. And I think it was um, P16, one of one in Berlin. We actually got quite a contingent from Africa there who were interested in what we were doing and we were interested in what they were doing. But most unfortunately, um, contact with which is probably why we started these catalogues so that um, we could try and get them involved. And so again, that's the focus that we want to be global and we want to try and get countries from the red areas on our map are uh, identified. Next. So um, anyway, at this stage, I'm not quite sure with this platform uh, whether we can get you to speak or maybe you'll have to put it in the chat. But we're after your news, any new projects, any new funding that's happened since the last time we met. And while you're thinking of it, I'll start. Next one, please. And so hot off the press, uh, I send an email around um, a couple of hours ago announcing that these guidelines have been prepared by a group. There's 22 authors from nine countries, 50 organisations involved, and it's international community guidelines for sharing and reusing quality information of individual earth science data sets. And it's open for comment. And just to give you a snapshot of what it's about, we've sort of based it on the four quality dimensions of the science, the content that is behind it, the product that we produce. And then once a group has produced a product, then you put it into the stewardship domain, the blue quadrant, and that's where you preserve, curate it, and look after it and manage it. And then of course, up in the top left in the green, we've got the services, which is uh, the services that you um, make available or sorry, but put on that data set so people can access it. And you can sort of see around this, we've got in each quadrant, what are the quality attributes we expect? So in the science domain, we expect uh, scientific expertise, things on content, uncertainty, whether it's valid. Whereas when you move over to the um, top left, you'd probably keep the scientists a mile from it because there you want the serious technical experts who can put good services up and rely on it. And so it's quite a long document. Um, Ivana, I've got a, her email there. Or you could look at the email I sent around this afternoon and that's just letting you know that's something that's been developed internationally for earth science data sets to make it available. Um, so now I'll pass over to all of you and ask, has anyone got any news or something new that you'd like to add or maybe put into the document? Or are you all going to be very silent? So again, Danny, a lot of people have just joined the room. Could you put the link in to the um, document? for the meeting notes in the chat, please.
Leslie? Okay, thanks, Danny. And if you go to the end of that um, document, you can see we've got open slather. Put any notes, any comments you feel about this meeting, how we can improve it. It's just there for you to put notes. And that is tied to this meetings page, so it'll be um, a permanent record. And so maybe you might want to actually put some news into that. Um, okay, so is somebody wanting to speak or? Leslie? Yeah, go for it. This is Mark Dietrich. I'm in Canada, but working closely with the European world. It's not the global south, but um, either of us. But uh, um, it might be interesting to the group to know that in uh, an upcoming Digital Europe program, work program, there is a plan, several planned data spaces that touch on this uh, this content area. One is a Green Deal data space. Another one is uh, creating a thing called Destination Earth, which is a digital twin of the, the Earth for intent to support uh, modeling and uh, scenario evaluation. Uh, as well as uh, a specific data space on agriculture. So uh, these may be interesting to various people on this call. Uh, I'll try to put some quick notes there and happy to talk more about it if there is interest and happy to shut up if there is not. To be Liz Leslie's audio. Did someone else try and join or what? Okay. All right. Well, I th go ahead. Um, okay. I think we might go back to the slides now. But again, as I said, this is a bottom up and we just want to hear from everyone. And we'll take any information, any vocabulary, anything. Just put it in. We don't discriminate. And please keep the ball rolling because we really want to know what's going on internationally. Okay, Shelley, so if we can go back. I've lost your slides. Okay, so now, um, as I said, we've been trying about three years to get speakers from the global south and we've done it this year and so now i'll invite uh pedro louis to present on uh, environmental uh infrastructures um in brazil uh pedro or who's driving his slides okay thank you leslie for introducing me i will uh start to present my so I think uh, just make sure everything is okay. Um, I, I will talk about the earth and environmental science and the and data infrastructures in Brazil. Uh, as a, I will talk about some projects that we are developing here in Brazil. Uh, as a proxy, what we are doing, what is doing uh, in most in South America and Latin America, just to have an idea about the data, data management infrastructure, what we are doing here in Brazil. So uh, I'm talking about first uh, my institution. I am from uh, Escola Politecnica, School of Engineering of University of São Paulo. Uh, is the, the, the reference in engineering in Latin America. Uh, it's important to talk about this because in your engineering school, we have uh, students from different countries from South, most of them, they are from South America, like Peru, uh, like Ecuador, uh, like Chile, Argentina, you have many students uh, from these different countries. Most of them work in engineering, you are training most of people in South America. Uh, we have different in our institution, mostly engineering, we have uh, around the 1,050, 1,500 students um, in grad and grad area. 
and uh, you have um, around uh, uh, 4,000 uh, engineering students uh, in, in grad and in undergrad. Um, uh, Politecnica is one uh, reference in, in South America, and the USP uh, has many different courses in agricultural area, in uh, life science area, and uh, um, many different areas related with geoscience. There are different different areas. This is a, uh, a institution, University of São Paulo. This is a reference in scientific production. We are uh, involved in different projects. Most of the project in South America related with the Earth and space. Usually, you, you University of São Paulo is involved. So, uh, in in Brazil, you have uh, different projects. Most of the project is supported by uh, national uh, uh, agents for research, and some of, some of them, most of them, is supported by our. Uh, state agents, they, they call FAPESP, we call FAPESP. FAPESP support different different projects, and most of these projects are developing some research infrastructure, they are uh, developing some research for, uh, they are developing repositories, some of these projects. So I will talk a little bit about some of these projects that, that are working in developing infrastructure. Uh, just to have an idea, in these projects, in different projects here, for example, the last one was responsible for uh, develop uh, infrastructure for biodiversity. It was developed uh, five years ago, and uh, just to have an idea. Uh, we have different projects, uh, institutional repository that are developing, for example, for uh, develop repository for in general, uh, in general domain, there's not a specific domain. Most of institutions, for example, University of Sao Paulo has a, 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 a DSpace uh, repository for all different disciplines. Uh, FAPESP has a repository. Uh, the, the, usually, we developed this repository three years ago. Uh, this is, I think is uh, it's pretty recently we have de developed institutional repository. Uh, okay, uh, it's important to say that uh, most of this repository was supported by uh, our uh, federal government or state government, or some of them is uh, is supported by organizations, specific organizations like University of São Paulo, for example. Uh, I will talk uh, about some projects that you are now involved just uh, to give an idea what kind of repository you are developing here in Brazil. One important project that you are involved in right now, supported by FAPESP or uh, state agents, is to build new tools for data sharing and reuse through a transnational investigation of socioeconomic impacts of protected areas. This is a Belmont project, so, uh, it's a form of uh, um, agents uh, of uh, research agencies in involved Brazil, uh, France, uh, Japan, uh, Professor Moriyama is here, I think, um, USA, Chile is, is the one leader of our consortium, and Leslie is involved, is a partner of this project too, with different organization like, organizations like DataSite, ORCID, EZIP, RDA, EDI, uh, Word, uh, Word that, uh, that System, ASP, JWP, and TNC from Australia. So the, the, the main focus of this project is developing um, uh, a, so, uh, predict uh, uh, socioeconomic outcomes of natural and protected areas on rural, communities using novel combination of satellite image and artificial intelligence. This project is developing um, um, a, a science 
uh, we are we have some science challenges and we are developing some data science infrastructure data science training uh, most of the community the research community involved in Brazil for example so uh, I will talk a little bit about the the infrastructure that you are developing this project this project is a synthesis project we are not uh, develop new um, primary data you are just consuming data to synthesize some uh, some uh, some results here uh, we are uh, some questions that you are trying to to find we are uh, trying to find some for example some socioeconomic indicators based on uh, satellite images and some uh, data that you are collecting using socioeconomic data just for training this model to to find uh, uh, some indicators that you can for example project some indicators uh, to understand how the protected areas is the, the impact of protected area in small community close to this uh, uh, this protected area so this project we de uh, develop uh, infrastructure that integrated uh, researchers because this project is it is developing in, in different countries in the world so you must integrate people researchers we must integrate different cultures uh, from different languages for example and uh, this infrastructure integrated multidisciplinarity too so we are using for example uh, uh, some infrastructure for integrated uh, the for example data exploring we are using some infrastructure to as a repository for all data that you are integrated in satellite images uh, some ground uh, survey that you have for different agencies uh, like uh, for example socioeconomic data that you are using in brazil you are using data from or uh, survey institute national survey institute so you put everything here and every scientist in the, the, the in the in the project can see all data sources that you are using so it's important to 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 everyone trust that data that we are using for training our models so this infrastructure integrated the some uh, development uh, people from computer science people from computer engineering we integrated people for geoscience that you are that we are working and what we are publishing here you integrated some documents everyone can access everything and everyone can find everything here uh, use github use slack for all team uh, so this is everything is in this kind of tools is important for integrated team and everyone to be uh, trust what you are doing, and then you have a checklist for uh, for uh, monitoring the use of this tool. More detail about this we can find here, and this is this is a uh, uh, the method that we use in this project. It's available in the note. So. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, I will talk about one very important project that you are starting in Brazil, that you are involving most institution in Brazil. Uh, this project is, uh, uh, is to deploy, the objective of this project is to deploy a data science information system and support services for modeling and analysis of greenhouse gas control process in the Amazon. Um, so this project is aggregating a lot of uh, data from flux towers. This is the, the map that you can see different flux towers. This is the Amazon area here in the nor north of Brazil. We have frontiers with different countries like Peru, uh, like Venezuela. It's uh, many countries here. This is part of Amazon, but most of the Amazon uh, is from is part of the north region of Brazil. We have ten flux towers 
that are collecting data since 1999. And uh, most of this data is available in, in NASA. Uh, all others is available in German, in Max Plan. This is the NASA is open data. Uh, this kind of data that's available in Max Plan, just the researchers that are involved in this project, they, they can access this data. Um, and we have um, uh, part of this data available in FTP infrastructure since 2016, because every data from collected until 90, uh, 2016 is available in DAC, in, in NASA infrastructure, yeah. And uh, after 2016, we start to manage it, for example, in FTP. No, but we are improving this infrastructure right now. Um, the challenge of this project is to create a computational infrastructure based on services, because most of this data is spread of different countries, different institutions. So we are going to aggregate of this data to analyze it uh, uh, and uh, create an infrastructure to analyze this data. This is the, the challenge of this infrastructure. <clears throat> so, uh, the, another, um, the another project that you are collecting data that is more involved with that data acquisition, um, this is a joint project uh, between, between Brazil, Germany, and USA. Uh, we are going to start next year. The objective of this, of this project is to understand the future of the forest based on climate change, deforestation, and forest degradation and fires. This project will uh, create this infrastructure. This is a great lab infrastructure to understand, for example, the owl aerosol, the owl uh, ecosystem involved in the forest. Um, this is this project involves a lot of data that you are going to collect based on sensors, observation in this area. This is like a lab, physical lab here. So you have a challenge here for collect data and uh, use some the best practice uh, developed in, in the different uh, countries, like in York Ridge National Laboratory, that they are developing some very nice. Uh, they have 30 years of experience in collecting data, so you are using this experience, you are sharing tools to create an infrastructure here uh, to collect this data and make this, uh, this data available for all communities in Brazil and international community. Pedro, you have two minutes. Yeah, two minutes. So uh, just to have an, uh, a general, uh, some recommendation for improve the data management in Brazil. Uh, they created some platforms, some infrastructure. It is, we must have a clear data policy and uh, for create some trust between. Uh, and we have uh, another, it's important to have a collaboration with inter, uh, international institution that has more experience, that has more maturity in data management. Uh, considering the, the evolution of hardware and the uh, uh, technology and now, for example, now you are working with so much with cloud infrastructure, it's important for us to work with cloud to make some work on it with uh, service infrastructure. Um, another important thing is to training, training uh, new scientists related with geoscience and related with uh, 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 life science for in data management. This is a very important thing. Thank you so much. Sorry for. Uh, okay. Thank you so much. No, 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 don't worry. You went too far. Now, I'd like to introduce our next speaker from the Chinese Academy of Science, Professor Fang Shen, who is going to talk on Chinese. Project Earth for the Sustainable Development Goals. Now, thanks. Someone's got your presentation right. Here we go. <laughs> so, if you just ask, um, they will move the slides for you. Okay. 
So take it away. Can you see my slides right now? Uh, can you see my slides right now? Exactly. Hello. Uh, can you see my slides? Yes. Yes, they look great. Go ahead. So thank you. So very happy to share the, some of the, our research progress on the use of the, the big data technology to support the sustainable development goals. So we call it the cost earth uh, activities. So my name is Function, so I will make the very short uh, introduction. So we know the whole the SDG is the whole issue. And uh, when we want to achieve the SDG, we notice there is a very huge challenge for monitoring the progress of the SDG. So we have the 17 goals and more than 20, uh, 200 uh, indicators. And most of them uh, lack of the enough data size to support the analysis. Also, do not have the data uh, to support the whole the progress. So this is a big challenge issue for the nomad scientific community and also the policymakers. So from the policymaker uh, perspective, the UN have the one important uh, mechanism, mechanism named, uh, named as the Technology Facilitation Mechanism, uh, TFM. And this is the international mechanism to use the scientific technologies to support the SDG achievements. So uh, we are the scientists, so under this mechanism, so in the Chinese Academy of Sciences, we, are launched, we, we will launch the one the program, we call it the Cast Earth Program. It's the big Earth data science engineering program. This is the program for pure scientific reasons and trying to build a, a high level big Earth data infrastructure and develop the world class big Earth data platform to support the research and also uh, uh, provide a platform for the decision makers for the SDG related issue. So this is the main objective for the program. So how could we do this? And the, we have systematic uh, activities. The first is uh, we need a date, and uh, how could we get date? We are uh, plan to uh, develop a satellite. We call it SDG satellite. This satellite can uh, monitor the human activity progress in the Earth, and then this will be the free and open data size for the developing country and also the developed countries to as a purpose for the SDG monitor. And also the in the cars, it's the biggest uh, institutions uh, in China. And so the cars have the huge size of the uh, data size already. And uh, they are, this is some of the key numbers I list here. The main idea is that is the cars will gather all the data size related to the SDG together. And then this data size will be compiled and also restored together. Then uh, will be shared uh, through the, 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 the opening science mechanism. And uh, the data is not only the uh, uh, one, just like the uh, points to address the uh, uh, issue, uh, data issues. We accept the, the restored, uh, obtained data. We also need to, to analyze the data. How could we do this? We need infrastructure. So CAS built the CAS code. This code is the, also the big, uh, uh, it's based on in the Beijing, but it's shared and through the internet can be used by the, through the different uh, users around the world. So this is uh, all, all open to the, uh, the users who have the uh, uh, demand for the SDG analysis. And so through this mechanism, in the last year, this is the uh, more than the eight PB data sites already be shared, and uh, including the satellite imagery, including the, uh, just like the, uh, 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 biological, ecological data. So this data also we update uh, three PB every year. So this pure open open data for the users for the SDG uh, purpose. So this is the data, uh, and the, this is the whole workflow how we transform the data to the SDG knowledge. The, in the uh, bottom is the data, data, data source we have, and then we have a big Earth data platform to restore and process data. Then uh, targeting the two different, uh, uh, just like areas, infrastructure, agriculture, and environmental and heritage and disaster related uh, forces. And we, ha we have the working groups, international working groups work together, then provide the SDG reports, highlights reports. So this is, this is how we make this work. 
And also this system already be online. So it's a cast a digital earth system. This is the have two type of the three types of the uh, interface. One is for the scientists, mainly for the online competitions. And one is for the decision makers, mainly for the demonstration. And then another one is the public users. They can just download data and then uh, use the, some of the basic functions. So this is the, how the system uh, uh, function. So for the SDG, and uh, at current stage, we focus on the uh, six SDG goals, uh, SDG 2 and uh, 6, uh, 11, and uh, 13, 14, and uh, 15. So because this is the main six uh, goals related to the Earth's surface system. So how we make it work? We have some of the, of the progress already. And use the data size, we just like use the, uh, just like the four SDG 14s. We monitor the whole the dynamic change for the uh, mangrove forest along the whole the, uh, Asia and uh, Africa or European regions. And uh, to cal calculate the, how the, the coverage of mango uh, changed in the past 20 years. And uh, we, we do uh, see some of the clear trends for the Asia have continued the uh, decrease trends. And for the African, we have the increasing just like the uh, trends. So this is the our data is uh, uh, in a system and can be processed uh, through the our big state platform to get it to the uh, image and uh, maps figures for the users. And uh, another advice I would like to share is the the uh, for the SDG 11 for the for the urban. Uh, we know the very important thing is that urbanization will impact, impact the whole the progress of the SDG. So people curious the how the, the the urban is trained, how many people are affected by the urbanizations. So uh, we use the, the uh, long term data size from satellite, also from the state data. Uh, uh, we have the from two thousands and now two thousand uh, this year's data size. We have the to to monitor the whole the progress for the urbanizations, and so. We, we noticed that in the 2000 and to the 2010, how the land consumption uh, was faster than the, the from 1990s to the 2000. And also uh, for the issue of the big cities, the detailed uh, urbanization trends can be uh, uh, assessed, uh, uh, evaluated through the high resolution uh, satellite imagery. So, and the, through this way, so the indicators for the 11.3 uh, and one, the ratio of land competitions rate to the population growth rate is be uh, just like calculated. So the policy use, uh, makers and the, the, the public users can easily get the whole the other size map, just like the in the, in the right uh, parts for the, these slides, and can notice the whole the trends. And another very important one we focus on is uh, uh, SDG uh, 15. Uh, this is for the lab online. So uh, one of the big uh, important issues is uh, we want to know the whole global land uh, degradation situation. How uh, we want to know in which areas we have the uh, degradation uh, issues, which area have increasing just like the issues. So also use the uh, different source of the data and uh, we evaluated the whole the global land degradation and the improvements from 2000 to the 2015. So this is uh, this data all precise uh, by the whole the big Earth data platform, and then the indicators of the SDG fifteen point three can be just easily to generate, and uh, this just uh, can provide the the whole global just like the degradation trends in the each of the countries. We know in the Central Asian regions we have the uh, uh, very serious degradation trends, and in the, in the China. And uh, in the uh, in the India, the whole uh, they have improved improvements for the whole uh, uh, just like integration. So what I would like to say is that how the people can do this because we have the one big Earth data infrastructures, so can help us to gather data from the uh, cars, also from the international partners, and the developing countries, the scientists can use this free data and the infrastructure to process the SDG. Analyze so we can share the knowledge about the SDG together. So this is how we uh, achieve this the, the 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 results. And also 
uh, every year we have the wonderful uh, just like a scientific uh, uh, results and we want to use this to support the decision makers and uh, the good uh, uh, news is that in the 2019 and the last year uh, our just like the reports was used by the chinese government and uh, as the whole the scientific report uh, in the UNGAs in the 74 and 75 and I was, I was official uh, just like a report. This is the pure scientific scientific contribution from the, at least from the, the Chinese scientific committee to support the SDG uh, policy makers. So this is uh, also this year and we will also continue this work and trying to uh, make much more contributions for the TFM uh, from the CAS uh, contributions. And also the last slide I would share is that uh, in the 17.5, uh, the UNGA, uh, uh, the Chinese president, uh, Chinese president Xi and uh, have the speech and uh, announced China will set up an uh, international research center of big data for the sustainable development goals. This, is, this, this center is purely based on our our customers, just like the uh, uh, scientific uh, base, and uh, this will be the new, just like the uh, channels for the international partners to work together in this international center to use the big earth data and big data technologies to for the SDG. So this is the uh, uh, information I would like to share with all the colleagues here. You are the colleagues and scientists in the data communities. And uh, I would like to open this just like the inf uh, information to you and welcome you all to, to contact me and we can address the uh, SDG challenge together through the methodology of the big data together. Oh, so this is the key message I would like to share uh, today. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you very much, Professor Chen, for coming to us because it was a bit difficult to get you connected into this. And so thank you for your patience and thank you, Alex, from RDA who helped us no end. Okay, thank you so very much. no problem. So if we go back to our uh, main slideshow, please, Shelley, thank you. Um, okay, so now we're at the next phase where we're going to um, um, we're going to now uh, just have short pictures on what the two breakout groups are. And I was going to hope that one of the technical people will stand by to help us do these breakouts because I'm sure I'll mess it up. So, um, Danny or Shelley, would you like to tell us what you want to do in your breakout and what you'll be asking people to do? Sure. Can you all hear me? Okay, great. Thanks so much. So this is um, this is going to be a quick update and maybe um, some solicitation for some feedback on some work that we have been um, undergoing since about January of 2020. And that's specifically um, the, the title slide, the intersection of data repositories and journal workflows. So it's pertaining to the publication of data with respect to um, the scholarly publication. And so what we'd like to do in the breakout is we're going to present some some background information for you now and present some use cases and then some recommendations that have been developing over the last year and a half and um, get some feedback. Um, and so this slide deck is going to be from a recent workshop fresh, fresh off the presses just last week. And so we're going to run through them, but um, hopefully we'll we'll uh, the slides are linked in the notes. And so you'll be able to dig into some of the content there a little a little deeper. Um, and Shelly, if you could advance. Thanks. And so the, the problem space or the work has really been driven by um, this particular use case on um, the trouble and the challenges that repositories have been meeting recently with the expectation for data to be published, cited and referenced in the scholarly publication, um, not just for sharing, um, but for um, publishing and journal reviewers to determine veracity of the findings of the scholarly publication. And so um, the, this growing expectation has been putting some pressure on repositories to produce published, cleaned DOI data sets ready for the scholarly publication. 
Um, within the domain data repository space, this is causing a lot of friction and some bottlenecks. There's very little communication between the journal and the repository and the author. Um, and there are a lot of um, data backlogs as they're getting prepared for the, for the scholarly publication. Um, so this work is to try and build some consensus by using a, um, a workflow model as framework to have discussions around. Um, next slide. So this slide just talks about the history of this work. Um, it's been socialized. It sort of started in um, February 2020. It's been socialized a lot through um, both the Earth Science Information Partners, ESIP, and um, some RDA sessions. Last week, we held a, uh, a dedicated workshop with publishers present to get some feedback from them. Um, I do want to acknowledge that there was some work done by an, a previous RDA um, working group. We found that, that that work, although very robust, was, was not getting at these friction points in between the workflow between the repository and the journal. Next slide. Um, Danny, you're not going through your whole slide deck, are you? No, no. Yeah. Okay, um, all right, sorry. <laughs> okay, no, but the link is there. Uh, let me yeah. um, actually thought when you got into your breakout, when, when you get into your breakout, you go through the whole slide deck or is that the intention? Well, actually, I was just going to let people go through the slide deck with the link. And so um, hit hit some of the key points and get to my use case. Okay, because so, this is meant to be a five minute introduction to your breakout. Okay, okay, so right. then let's move on to um, let's move on to the last slide then, Shelley. So we can hit um, we can hit this all in the in the breakout then. So really, what we're focusing on are um, up up one two. What we're focusing on um, there, what journals can do. Um, these are recommendations that came out of the most recent um, workshop that we had last week. Uh, there will also be a breakout. Um, uh, notes document that has these recommendations in, um, and the this is for journals, and um, this has been sort of drafted at the workshop and vetted with some journals, but we want more broader feedback. The next slide, please, will show ones for repositories. These are recommendations that we hope that repositories can adopt that will um, smooth the smooth the workflow between that um, the touch points between repositories and journals. Um, and then we look to um, figure out our next steps after we get feedback. Um, so that's basically it. I will put some notes in the breakout session chat box for folks to go in and, and write their comments and suggestions. Um, and then we can go through the slide deck a little more then. Sound okay, Shelly? Okay. Leslie? Okay, that, um, yeah, that's, that's great. So that's what's going to be in breakout A. A. Okay. Now, I'll, I'll just give you a quick, quick pitch. pitch. Danny, I think you got to switch your sound off. Or we echo. Okay. All right. So breakout um, two, I'm hoping Pedro and Fang will join us. Um, and I've pretty well got a blank screen. So next slide, please, um, Shelley. I'm just going to ask how can we connect because you've just heard some fantastic work that's going on um, and I just want to know um, how we connect to these groups. So uh, I've noticed according because not many of you have filled in the um, the attendance sheet like we asked you to but we don't seem to have many people from um, Africa or Asia or South America but if you're working in those areas, do come along because we want to get ideas on how we can better connect. Next. And um, yeah, just kind of look at our catalogues and maybe uh, if you know of projects that are there and um, if not, maybe you may want to ask more questions of um, Pedro and Fang. And so I'll be running um, breakout B. Now I'm going to ask, either um, Kevin or someone, one of the, somebody could come along and tell us how to do the breakouts. And then what I hope is, uh, how about we go for no more than half an hour, because then you've got to come back in and we'll have a quick report back from each group and then also plan what we're going to do next. Ah, oh, here's Father Kevin. Kevin, tell us what to do next, please. So just give me a moment. Uh, I'd, uh... Realize you've got breakout set up 
in this session. Um, so it, it may not be obvious, you can actually scroll down this window. Uh, certainly if you're using Chrome uh, like me, there's an almost invisible scroll bar next to the video window. But if you page down, you'll see below the video, below the session description, there are four uh, brown circular buttons labeled breakout A, breakout B, breakout C, and breakout D. Uh, you just click on those and it'll bring you into one of the breakout rooms. Um, I presume you've got some method of deciding who's meant to go to which room. You go into a room, it'll be just like the experience you, you, you had here. And when you exit that room, it will just bring you automatically back to this main session. Kevin, that... Kevin, Kevin, can people yeah. choose A if they're going to Danny and B if they want to do the um, connecting with the Global South? Can people oh. do that? So you're only using two of those breakout only rooms? Use one with Danny's group and B is do that. Okay, that's fine. And just, just to make clear, I'll linger here in the main room in case anyone turns up late and I'll tell them to find their way to one of those two rooms. Okay, and then what? how do we come back? That's the trick I couldn't work out. So when you're in a room, if you just use that exit button that you can see down where your mic and, and, and whatever controls, Yeah. In a breakout room, when you exit, you automatically come back into this session. Right. Yeah. Okay, so can we see everyone in um, 25 minutes? Is that fine, please? So can you please select whether you want to go to A or B? <laughs> go ahead, Danny. So, well, I'll let Shelly, you know, I'll let you... Um, I'll let you fill in where I'm deficient here, but most of the conversation was centered around um, uh, uh, everybody's pain points specifically, but some good, some really good suggestions. I think it turns out that, um, you know, although these recommendations are not earth chattering, um, I think the, the heavy lift is on communication between the repository and the journal, acknowledging that that often happens through the, the author um, and uh, culture change, basically. So on behalf of the journals, they just we, we just need to s start this um, uh, this more explicit communication on on the needs. Um, there was a lot of corroboration about other repositories having this this, this similar problem. Um, and then some suggestions to go into the data versioning working group with RDA. Um, thank you, Jens, for that. Um, and there might be some some uh, information to help repositories there. Uh, Shelley, anything else you heard? Uh, the, the desire to make sure that journals, uh, once we have the recommendations uh, ready to, for review, um, that journals can uh, are made aware of their role here. Um, and this, a lot of this dovetails into some of the challenges that journals have about helping their authors select repositories. We, I, I, what I'd highly recommend is, um, and, and if you went to yesterday's session, I, I think you can, you can, you've experienced some of the complexity here. Um, it's better for the repository community to create those recommendations. Um, it's, it's journals just want to make it easy, and yet we know that the repository community is really complex. Um, and if if we can help journals with a tool or guidance to say, okay, do it like this, that will be much better. That's what they would prefer. They're frustrated. Um, and um, uh, and this this particular issue we're digging in here uh, exacerbates uh, demonstrates and exacerbates the 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 actual problems between the two communities. So if we get it right, then that helps. I'll throw one last comment in on that. Um, there was someone last comment in the chat about how to stay um, engaged and involved in this in this activity. And um, Shelley had put some uh, a link to Coptus, and I'm going to get this wrong. Coalition of Publishers and Data in the Earth and Space Sciences. Sciences. Thank you. Uh, and she linked to some recent workshops, um, but that's also at the the. Coptus website, and so all of this work is falling under the cop, uh, under the auspices of ESIP and Coptus, or Coptus, which is a cluster under ESIP. And so, um, following Coptus will 
keep you informed of this information. It can be part of this group as well. It 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 really is very broad. Um, so it's I mean we can certainly once those recommendations are finished, send it out to this entire mailing list for ESS. Great. Oh yes, right. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Uh, Leslie, I think I think that's our high points. And we're not hearing you if you think you're talking. That's that's great. Um, I'll just add to what you said is don't forget this is actually the ESIP slash RDA. It is a joint uh, group with ESIP where we try and bring issues from ESIP into RDA. Um, so I'll just quickly report back from group B. Um, I've got the key points. Um, so it was a smaller group, but uh, the suggestion was that there are actually activities in Africa, Asia, South America, but they're, but they're being funded by Europe and North America. And Hans raised a very important point that in some countries it's suspicious of what they call parachute or parasite science, where the global north are coming in and taking data and not um, acknowledging it or, you know, just taking it away and there isn't any feedback back to the um, low to middle income countries. And so the suggestion was there needs to be a greater focus on helping groups to build their own infrastructures rather than exporting the data. Uh, carpentries and co-data were mentioned as having good networks into these countries. So maybe we could use that to try and connect to um, things in earth and space sciences. And uh, there was a really good suggestion from the RDA Libraries for Research um, Data Interest Group, deliberately sought chairs from outside of Europe, North America, and got, from, got them from Singapore, India, and Kenya. And so within RDA, they are a group that does have very good that does have networks into the areas we're trying to connect and maybe we could connect with them. So um, with a couple of minutes left to spare, uh, does anyone want to add anything um, to their breakouts? Because if not, we'll just um, start the wrap up and what we're planning to do for the next one, which is really not what we're planning, but what you're planning. Um, Leslie, uh, just a a quick plug, I just put into the notes the link to the COPDES workshops. Um, so the recording of the workshop that Danny and I and you, Leslie, led last week with all of that information is there. Uh, a deep dive on this on this workflow that we just described. Um, and also um, the RCN for model data. Um, if you, uh, and Ulrich is on here, if you're interested in, um, you know, how, when you're preserving models and model output, what would be a rubric for how to know what to keep? This was really great work coming out of EarthCube and there'll be a presentation on that as well as software citation guidance coming out of Force 11. There's a, soft, there's a presentation on that. So you're welcome to sign up and register for those upcoming workshops. Okay. Um, look, thanks, Shelley. I think what we can do is uh, we need to get better at using our email list. So um, please let, let us know um, what you'd like for the next session. I was thinking of, I briefly showed you that quality group, which is in Earth and Space Sciences. Maybe we could get them involved next time to keep my search for um, presentations on infrastructures in Africa, Asia, South America. And uh, please get back to me if you think of anything that you would like to see and we'll see what we can connect with. And so with that, with one minute to go, I um, think we'll finish off and ask whether my co-chairs want to say anything. And if not, thank you very much. You were a great audience and thanks for um, participating. We really enjoyed um, having you. Leslie, thanks for organizing this. This went, this was really fantastic. Thanks so much, Leslie. Okay, all right. Whew, I'm exhausted, guys. <laughs> you too. <laughs>
So please, please join this particular uh, interest group if you want to continue to get information on all of this. Um, it, everything that we've brought up, everything happening with CopDesk does go through this interest group email. Oh, thanks, you guys. Um, how, oh, and sorry, I'd just also like to say thank you so much to the technical group, particularly <laughs> Alex, who did a lot of work behind the scenes to help get Fang to be able to make his presentation for us. And thanks also to Kevin. He was great as well. He was amazing. He's hopped off. He let us know that. So, yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Oh, is the technical person still here or have you all gone? Alex? Anyone still here who's technical? I'm just wondering whether the chat gets saved. That's all. Okay, let's finish. Bye.